Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Padmavati Tangaturte from Teach Connect. I'm back again. Now it's time for third chapter, Science for Class 10 CBSC Examination. This is a series of videos on concept-focused question for grade 10. Now it's time to learn third chapter. Third chapter is all the more easy because you already have gone through chapter one and chapter two. There is one single statement which you can learn and the rest of the questions will follow this statement. If you are strong at this statement, please stop calling me a cute zebra. I like her calling me smart goat. Please stop calling me a cute zebra. I like her calling me smart goat. That is, please stands for potassium, stop sodium, cal calling calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, zinc, iron, lead, hydrogen, copper, mercury, silver, gold. All these elements fit into this statement. Please stop calling me a cute zebra. I like her calling me smart gold. This is the mnemonics. If you are good at this, definitely your student will also be good at this statement. Then each letter stands for each element. If a student is good at a reactivity series, how the higher element can replace the lower element. This one small trick will keep the student right on top to get an A plus in this particular chapter. Therefore, as I've already mentioned, chapter one is the title for the rest of the chapters. Chapter one is something like a heading. It's a summary. Therefore, chapter three deals with Metals and non-metals. This is primarily a check on reactivity series. Now I will share my screen. Chapter 3, Metals and Non-Metals. All these belong to this competency-based question booklet. Competency-focused practice question booklet released by CBSC. Now let us go to Chapter 3. We've already done chapter one and chapter two. Now it's time for chapter three. Metals and non-metals. For if we look at this, copper plate and iron plate, which replaces which one? Can copper react with iron? Can copper displace iron? Or will iron displace copper? Mercury, silver, gold are at the end. These are low reactive substances, whereas potassium is the high reactive substance. Therefore, it's important for us to understand the reactivity series. In the first question, can iron displace copper or not? This is a challenge here. Therefore, in order to know this, we have to understand the reactivity series. We have read that. I like her calling me. I is iron and calling is copper. Therefore, I like her calling. Iron will displace copper. This is how children have to run thoroughly the reactivity series. All elements above hydrogen, who are, which are the elements below hydrogen, and how the elements can displace, the teacher has to give a clear idea. Then definitely students will be able to do a good job in writing all the questions correctly for chapter 3. Now, if we take these questions, that means iron can displace copper from copper sulfate. Then look at the next question. What happens to copper sulfate? when it reacts with silver plate. Copper, sulfate, silver plate. One trick here is 
the re high reactive element has to be free in order to react with a compound. That means copper sulfate, silver is a free element. Silver cannot displace copper. Whereas had it been silver sulfate and copper, then copper would definitely have displaced uh, silver. That's how the higher reactive element has to be free and the lower reactive element should be in a compound form. That's how. Now look at this. Listed here is the reactivity of certain metals. Some react with air, some react with water, and some others react with dilute acids. First of all, the prerequisite is just go through the complete information, then recollect what is there written in the textbook. Many of the questions given in this particular chapter will easily be solved here itself. There is no need of recapitulation too. Gold does not oxidize or burn. There is no reaction with water and there is no reaction with dilute acids. Platinum, there is no reaction, does not dissolve in water and there is no reaction with dilute acid. That's how from the list above, we are not supposed to consider all the elements from the syllabus. Here, these are the four elements given. Identify the metal or the metal. Now, this is a challenge here. Metal or the metal that are likely to be found in a pure state in the Earth's crust. Pure state. Now what element remain, remains in pure state? Continuously check. Read it. Underline the statement. Ask children to underline these important words. Then see that gold and platinum, they do not react. That means they are available in pure state. Some of these questions do not even require reactivity series. Now, when W sulfate, metal X, that means metal X is reacting with W, means X is placed higher than W sulfate. Now, X sulfate is formed. This is a compound. Metal Y reacts with this. Y becomes Y sulfate. Then Y sulfate reacts with Z. That means Z is in higher state. Z, Y, X and W sulfate. Now the green solution will not react with metal X again because it's metal X is lower reactivity and the green sulfate solution is higher reactivity status. That's how children can completely understand rusting, alloy formation, and the reactivity series. If they are sure with the reactivity series, stain, stainless steel does not rust. Iron, nickel, and chromium form an alloy. The statement Q present a valid explanation for statement P? Yes, because alloys are better resistant to rusting and withering. That's how we are supposed to justify this statement. All the questions depend only on the reactivity series. Question number 12. A metal oxide on being heated with carbon does not produce carbon dioxide. Any metal oxide reacting with carbon, if it reacts, it has to produce carbon dioxide. That means obviously there is only one reason. Metal oxide is at a higher reactive status and carbon is a free element at a lower reactive status. Therefore, metal oxide will never replace the free element carbon. Higher element replaces a bottom element. That's what we, we can see here. Therefore, anything metal element, it floats on water. These are the properties given here occurs naturally as its chloride of formula MCL. That means either it should be KCl, NaCl. Dissolves in water to form hydroxide. It dissolves. That means it is sodium chloride. You know, and uh, there is chlorine byproduct which is obtained. Yes, these are competency-based questions. But we are supposed to understand that competency-based questions are not a barrier provided children learn the first statement very clearly. The four students are supposed to learn this statement. Get them memorize this statement. Please stop calling me a cute zebra. I like her calling me smart goat. Please stop calling me 
a cute zebra. I like her calling me smart goat. This statement will solve the complete chapter three metals and non-metals for students. Thanks for watching my video. Be a part of this mission of improving the quality of education at school. Share this video to somebody who needs it. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh,